there was a time when I couldn't fathom being on stage and speaking in a room full of people. I am naturally an introvert, and I've been hiding behind my sketchbook since I was in elementary school. But when I became an entrepreneur, I realized that my being up here on this stage, or on any stage, isn't really about me. At least it's not about this version of me. It's about the version of me who couldn't quite imagine where I'd fit in in this world because I couldn't see it. It's about all the versions of me, artist, athlete, coach, entrepreneur, who needed representation. And it's about the middle school girl who DM'd me on Instagram when I was just two years into running my own business. She was an athlete, which was evident from all of the basketball photos that decorated her Instagram grid. And in her message, she told me that I inspire her. My initial response was, who, me? <laughs> But ultimately, I stopped hiding behind my sketchbook for her and for anyone like her who might need to see what's possible. Now, I use the term hiding pretty loosely because I'm 6'1", and <laughs> I always stand out. I also always get asked the same question. Do you play basketball? <laughs> When I was a college athlete, I would respond by pretending to be a WNBA player. <laughs> Now my response is awkward because I'm washed up and retired. <laughs> But there was a time when the answer to that question was simply no. I didn't play basketball. I didn't want to play basketball, and I hated that question. I didn't start playing basketball until I was a sophomore in high school. Despite being asked often, mainly by my seventh grade math teacher, he once convinced my mom to bring me to one of his practices. I hated that practice. Imagine being a 12-year-old who spends her time sewing outfits for her dolls. And then one day, suddenly, you're at basketball practice being told to run for two hours. <laughs> My teacher and coach for that day didn't even try to make it a fun practice for the new girl in the gym. It was all business, just conditioning drills after conditioning drills. I cried the entire drive home, and I begged my mom not to make me play basketball. And she didn't, because I was pretty annoying. Eventually, I saw the examples that I needed to see. Eventually, I learned that in order to access my wildest dreams, I'd have to go through that basketball court. At that time, my wildest dream was to be an intern for Vera Wang, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure is an amazing job, but I could dream of anything in the world, and I stopped at intern. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I was playing small in this world. I was shrinking out of fear, but mostly out of a lack of representation. Somewhere along the way, the world teaches some of us to shrink by normalizing some things and by rejecting other things. I didn't see myself starting my own business or building my own brand. I didn't see myself as a leader or a boss, just like I didn't see myself as an athlete. But when we're introduced to the right example at exactly the right time, there's a sequence that follows. We see it, we believe, then we have the audacity to do something, and then we become the person that we are intended to be. For me, that example was Tina Charles. And then it was Sylvia Fowles. And then it was Candace Parker. <laughs> By the time I was 15, I had a routine. I would DVR every televised Tennessee women's basketball game. I'd watch them constantly, the same games, over and over. Then I'd go outside across the street to the basketball court, and I'd try to be like Candace. I went from hating that I was 6'1 to praying that I would be 6'4, <laughs> like Candace. <laughs> Somehow, the more I wanted to be like Candace, the more I stopped shrinking, and the ceilings that I thought were there 
were gone. I earned a Division I basketball scholarship after playing in college, the first two, in high school, the first two years. I played, I coached, and basketball gave me access to more opportunities to stop hiding. Representation isn't just about role models. It isn't just about admiration. Representation is power, and it is truth. It is the invitation that we receive to explore our potential for greatness and success. Representation is really important because it affirms for us that there is no ceiling to our potential. Representation is a lesson that ceilings are just the perception of limitations. It stretches our imagination beyond what we thought possible. Some of us have more access to the power of representation than others. It is all around. Everyday examples of what they can become. But for me, a black woman, and for anyone marginalized in any way, we are lucky if we find just a few examples in our lifetime that resonate with who we are and that push us closer to who we are meant to be. We must filter through misrepresentation and counteract underrepresentation. We must unearth our own examples because for us, representation is also hope. It is the light that moves us towards the goals and the dreams that often seem out of reach. Representation is essential, and we need more examples, along with more opportunities for those examples to be discovered, more visibility, so that more of us can win. I am now four and a half years into running my own business, but I still think about that DM from that young athlete on Instagram pretty often. She taught me that representation isn't a linear thing. It doesn't just stop when we accomplish something or when we become who we feel we're meant to be in this world. Representation is a cycle that keeps going, powered by the opportunities that we have to become the representation that someone else needs to see. That DM also taught me that representation is just a starting point because we are never meant to be like anyone else. I wasn't meant to be like Candace. <laughs> we are only meant to uncover the power of representation that already ex exists within ourselves. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>